Hello, everyone. Welcome to Inside the Americas. Here's a look at today's show. The Alabama Senate passes the most restrictive abortion bill in the U.S., a near total ban, even in cases of rape and incest. Then a California court hands an unprecedented $2 billion verdict in favor of a couple who say their cancer was caused by popular weed killer Roundup. And we'll head to Honduras, where violence, poverty and corruption are forcing hundreds to flee the country every day. I'm Jeannie Godula. This week, the Senate in the southern state of Alabama passed the most restrictive abortion ban in America. That would make it a felony to perform an abortion in Alabama, even in cases of rape or incest. It also could send doctors who carry out abortions to prison for life. Alabama's Republican backers pushed that legislation through with the express goal of overturning the landmark Supreme Court case, Roe v. Wade, that legalized abortion across the United States. 25 to 6 in favor of a near total ban. The state of Alabama has approved by a wide margin and after raucous debate, the U.S.'s strictest legislation outlawing abortion. The law, which still must be signed off by the state's Republican governor, provides only one exception if a woman's life is at risk. But why you all want to control our body? The procedure would still be illegal in cases of rape or incest and punishable by law. The new legislation makes performing an abortion a felony, with doctors risking up to 99 years in prison. Protesting outside the state house, rights groups are expected to challenge the law in court. For the strict ban defies the nation's Supreme Court statute, Roe v. Wade. The Alabama law is part of a wider push by 16 states this year to restrict abortions. Already four states have rolled out a ban if a fetal heartbeat is detected, which can happen as early as six weeks. These numerous challenges have been emboldened by anti-abortion activists' hopes for a possible reversal of the 1973 ruling. Now that there are new, more conservative justices on the Supreme Court. I think it's just a matter of the new Supreme Court, that the Trump Supreme Court now, they feel that the Roe versus Wade would be overturned. I think these states are raising to get to the top to say that they were the first to get there. For decades, the issue of abortion has dominated American politics, with generally conservative Christian groups pushing Republicans for bans in the name of an unborn life. While many Democrats and women's rights groups say politicians shouldn't have a say about a woman's right to choose. Our number of the week is a big one, $2 billion. That is for the $2 billion in damages awarded to a California couple who say they got cancer from using Roundup. That popular weed killer is made by Monsanto, a company that now belongs to agrochemical giant Bayer. It was the third successive loss by Bayer in U.S. courts. It's also the highest award to date by a jury after the key element in Roundup, glyphosate, was linked to cancer. Cancer. This couple have been battling cancer for nine years. They blame a Monsanto glyphosate-based weed killer. On Monday, a jury awarded them $2 billion in punitive damages. We wish that Monsanto had warned us ahead of time about the dangers of using Monsanto and that there was something on the front of their label that said danger may cause cancer. Bayer, the company that owns Monsanto, will appeal the verdict. It says the Monsanto weed killer Roundup is considered safe by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. This is the third time in less than a year a U.S. court has awarded massive damages against the company. This retired Californian was awarded $80 million in March. Last August, a former gardener was awarded $289 million. Does either side wish to poll the jury? Bayer currently faces lawsuits from more than 13,000 plaintiffs in the United States. Its share price has tumbled since it bought Monsanto last year for $63 billion. The price was around 100 euros a share last June. It's now around 55 euros. Shareholders have seen 85 billion euros wiped off stock value. Trouble is also brewing in Europe against the makers of the world's most used weed killer, it's reported Monsanto kept lists of politicians and scientists in France who were for or against them. 
the pressure is increasing with some boycotting underway against Bayer and Monsanto products. So can the German group take the hit? The current situation is more than serious because it puts Bayer's very economic existence in danger. The company will have to tackle shareholder discontent as it also braces itself for a huge and long legal battle as to just whether Roundup is causing cancer. A security breach on WhatsApp this week allowed attackers to put commercial Israeli spyware on cell phones. The messaging company reportedly discovered up to two weeks ago that attackers could install surveillance software on smartphones. It now says users should update WhatsApp for the fix as soon as possible. WhatsApp, that belongs to Facebook, said the breach had signs of coming from a government using surveillance technology developed by a private company and that it may have been targeting human rights groups. Our picture of the week now shows Central American migrants walking along a road in Mexico on their way to the United States. Many of these migrants come from Honduras. Hundreds of people are leaving that country every day, running from violence, poverty and corruption. It's nighttime in San Pedro Sula, the second biggest city in the country. This group of policemen is patrolling a neighborhood known for its high crime rate. Escorted by soldiers, they carry out identity checks and body searches, confiscating drugs and weapons. A way, they say, to keep criminality in check. The police go to neighborhoods dominated by gangs. They stop and search people. And they gradually retake control of those areas. That, in turn, helps to reduce crime. The murder rate in Honduras shrank by more than 50 percent from 87 killings per 100,000 residents in 2011 to just 42 in 2017. However, the country remains one of the most violent in the world. Gangs known locally as the Maris are largely to blame. For years, they've been running extortion rackets and spreading terror across the country. Add to that endemic corruption and widespread poverty, and it's easy to see why thousands flee the country every month. Rolando has already tried to go to the US twice. He says the government is doing nothing to help people like him. The government should focus on giving us jobs. That's right, if we had jobs, we wouldn't want to leave. It looks like our president simply does not care about us. A sentiment echoed by this sociologist who says Hondurans have no other choice but to leave the country. This mass exodus, these thousands of Honduran men and women leaving the country in caravans, it sends a clear message. And the message is that Honduras is not doing well. Things are very bad here and there's not a glimmer of hope. A 2018 World Bank report shows that Honduras is the third most unequal country in the world, behind South Africa and Haiti. Brazil's legendary indigenous chief and activist was in Paris this week for the start of his European tour. His name is Chief Rowney, and he's not only meeting heads of state, but also a series of celebrities and the Pope in his quest to highlight the growing threat to the Amazon. But before he left for the three-week tour, he welcomed a television crew to the Amazon reserves where he lives, along with several other indigenous tribes. Here's their report. Deep in the Amazon forest, he's come to visit a neighboring tribe. Welcomed as a hero, indigenous chief Rauni blesses children and watches the traditional prosperity dance. The guest of honor, the Kayapo leader, promises to fight for the rights of all of Brazil's tribal people, including the many tribes here in the Xingu Reserve. I think of all of you as my children. I'm doing all I can to protect our lands. I'm old, but I will fight until my dying day so that you can continue to live in peace. With cell phones and video cameras, the tribesmen film the celebrated activist's speech. A touch of modernity and a fight to maintain age-old traditions and cultures and above all, indigenous lands. Precious rainforests that are increasingly under attack by industry, or as they say here, the white man. Deforestation has stepped up with the election of populist President Jair Bolsonaro. 
A climate change skeptic, the president has been rolling back indigenous and environmental protections. He compares us to animals. Who does he think he is? We're human beings, just like the white man. President Bolsonaro needs to understand that if they continue to destroy the Amazon, then the entire world won't have any oxygen. We will all die, indigenous people and everyone else too. Seeking to raise one million euros to safeguard tribal reserves from loggers and miners, Raoni has kicked off his ninth tour of Europe. His critics questioned the use of such funds. But as the chief packed his presents for European hosts, such as this feathered headdress for President Macron, time is of the essence. For the elderly activist, but also for the Earth's irreplaceable Amazon. We'll leave you now in New York, where a new museum opening at the Statue of Liberty is giving visitors another opportunity to explore its history. The museum sits on Liberty Island, not far from the statue's entrance. It's the new home for the Statue of Liberty's original torch and other artifacts, which had previously been in a smaller museum space inside the statue's pedestal that was notoriously hard to get into. The new space is open to anyone who comes to Liberty Island, with admission included in the price of the ferry ticket. We'll leave you with those pictures. Thanks so much for watching this Inside the Americas. We'll see you again soon on France 24. From North to South Africa, from Bamako to Nairobi, from Accra to Mogadishu. Bringing you all the political, economic, cultural and social news from Africa for a better insight into an ever-changing continent. Across Africa, presented by Georgia Calvin-Smith on France 24 and France24.com.